Hey everybody, John here, and welcome back to the series, How to Use Toxic Biohazard. This is going to be video five, and we're going to be talking about the LFO sections on the left and the right hand side, right over here. So they seem very minuscule, but they are very powerful. So first and foremost, the way to select your LFO shape is going to be here, similar to the oscillators we talked about in previous videos. And you can select the name, and you can pick the waveform. Or alternatively, you can select the arrows and kind of cycle through them, which is a little bit easier sometimes if you're holding down some notes and you just want to see what they sound like. So a very c cool kind of thing that I really like about the synth, as I mentioned before, is that it comes with gates. So down here, you have a choice of nine different types of gates. So let's pick gate four, for example, and let's make this a make this a saw wave. Now, if you look here in the center section, you have an LFO little spot here. So if we're using oscillator one, let's put one all the way to 100. So this is going to be con controlling the volume of this first oscillator. And again, let's make this not as boring. Do a little filtering as we learned before. So as we can see, this shape here is what we're seeing over here, although with a little added extra harmonics, but this gate here is now getting sent to this, uh, this oscillator, that, which is controlled right here. So 100% of this oscillator is getting controlled by this LFO, the volume. And this is why it's nice to cycle through. And an easy way to kind of demonstrate that is generally with a square wave, because it's kind of like an on-off thing. Even though there is a little bit of lead, it should technically be completely silent, but it's probably to do with the, uh, the waveform itself. And the next up on this section, we have this sync. So if you don't want anything to be synced up to your, uh, your BPM itself, this is going to be selected to none, and then this is going to be your rate of the speed of the LFO. That's very slow. I don't even know when it's coming. Ah, there it is. There it is. Okay. So that's going to be the uh, independent rate, as you can see, measured in hertz down there at the top. And it goes highest to 20, which is generally about correct. But let's say you want it to be synced up with your BPM. So mine's a 140 at the default. You have this choice of all these different speeds. So once you select something here, this speed knob becomes deactivated because it doesn't really make sense because it's synced up to this. So that's basically what that does in a nutshell. Now over here, this free, so what is this? So basically if this is on, this LFO is kind of going to be free running, it's gonna be just moving. But if it's off, it's going to restart every single time that you press the key. It might be difficult to kind of detect, but think of it in a way where if this is off, every time you start the note, this shape is going to start here and then move again and move again and move again and move again. If it's in free running mode, it's just going to kind of pick a random spot generally because it's always moving. So when you're playing, it might start here, it might start over here, it might start here, it might start here. So generally, it's not really that big of a deal, I would say. But if there's any problems where you kind of notice that, that's why it's always kind of there. Personally, I kind of like to keep it off because I like the consistency of when I start a note or start a chord that my LFO will start from the same spot every single time. But there's also cases where maybe in like a, a pad or something like that, you don't want it to be so predictable. So maybe you want to have it free so it kind of just starts in like different spots and it does its own thing, especially if you're using, using it controlling a, a filter as well. So something to keep in mind there. And then on the right here is kind of basically the same thing. You just have another oscillator or another LFO right here. And before we go, there's one thing that I kind of want to point out. So let's say you uh, you want to you're, you're doing like a gate or something like we did before, 100%, right? And then we'll move this 
the sine wave, which will go back to a sine wave. So it's getting controlled here on the left-hand side with this LFO, which is cool, which is fine. But now with a filter section, this knob is only dedicated to LFO 1. So now it's going to control the filter. And you might be kind of in a tough spot and saying, oh, man, I kind of wish that this would only control the, uh, the cutoff. But I want this to be a little bit more independent. So if that's the case, then I would take this out of the first LFO and then use it in the second one. Or whoops, uh, use it in the second one here. Because that way, you can use this one independently and then use this LFO one just for the filter. So kind of dedicate this LFO for the filter and then maybe this LFO for volume or something like that. That would make a little bit more sense to me because you're kind of utilizing both cases because this is only for LFO one. So something to kind of keep in mind there as well. So that's basically how the LFOs work. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I don't think they're really too complicated. Uh, that's kind of a nice part about the synth. It looks complicated, but it's really not. It's kind of, once you see where everything's at, it makes a lot of sense and everything's right in front of you. There's not too many pages, except for these here in the center, but we shall go over those in the next videos. The next video, we're going to be talking about this whole matrix center and demystifying what all this stuff does. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.